not bathing, acting out, meanness, foul language. These are just some of the challenging behaviors you may begin to notice if your parent has dementia. We're thrilled again to have my sister Jackie with us, and we're discussing some of the concerning behaviors we begin to notice with our parents who have dementia. Now, everybody's experience with dementia is going to be a little bit different. Yours may be completely different from ours, but I wish someone had let us know what to expect as our parents started experiencing more severe dementia symptoms, so we wouldn't be taken so off guard. At least it would have given us a framework for understanding more about the disease and how best to help them through each stage. And even so, our parents had different kinds of dementia, so they didn't present their symptoms in the same way. Anytime you have a concern, it's nice when somebody reaches out to you and lets you know that I had the same thing with my parent, because when it's the first time you're noticing these in your parent, it can be very upsetting. So to know that this is a common thing that other caregivers are experiencing can bring some comfort to you. So we're going to be breaking down this topic into two separate videos. One in the future about the alarming behaviors you may notice, and there are quite a few. And this one, which will be all about the challenging behaviors you may notice in your parent with dementia. One of the first symptoms we noticed was every afternoon around 3.30 or 4, she got all the aids. She was agitated, irritated, frustrated, and had extremely high levels of anxiety. We can laugh now, but when it, they're going through it, there's nothing funny no. about it. Mm -hmm. And Daddy would often call us to come over to help because he just couldn't handle her outbursts by himself. Mm -hmm. We later found out these outbursts had a name. It's called sundowners. Sundowner syndrome is a group of symptoms or behaviors like aggression, confusion, anxiety, or even wandering that usually occur late in the afternoon and can last even into the night. The cause is unknown, but it's usually caused by changes in lighting towards the end of the day. And this would be a good point to remind everyone that we are not experts. If you've got questions about this, please check with your medical provider because we are just sharing the experiences that we experienced with our parents. One tip that I was given, although it was too late for mama, was a friend of mine was experiencing sundowners with her mother. Mm -hmm. And she said she would go over to their house and turn every light yes. in the house on. And that seemed to help. So try it. You have nothing to lose. When it became obvious that mama needed more help and we were going to have to make a move, we took her to a memory care unit. It was a ranch, 16 bedrooms, shared dining room. They had a screened-in back porch and a puzzle room and we thought that would be just fabulous. Mm -hmm. I want to take a moment right here, and if you're not familiar with your choices out there, you have independent living, assisted living, memory care, and dementia-skilled nursing care. All very different. They offer different levels of care, mm -hmm. so you need to do a little bit of homework and research to find out exactly where your parent needs to go at that time. This was the right first step for Mama. We were pleased that she was there. We liked the fact that it looked like a house. We thought she would be more comfortable there. It had older decor, so we thought she would be a little more comfortable, comfortable. in those surroundings. And it was really here that her sundowners took on a whole new dimension. Yes. Now she had experienced some sundowning at the assisted living facility, but boy, when she got to the memory care, it kicked into to high gear. This is when she started talking about wanting to go home all the time. And this is a very common behavior with dementia patients. They always want to go home. And going home, they don't really mean going to a house. It is more a time in their memory. We did a lot of reading between the two of us. One 
helpful bit of information that I read was when your parent is talking about wanting to go home or something similar, you first need to find out how old they are. Mm -hmm. And by that, sometimes mama would talk about taking care of children, whether that was us or she was babysitting. So she could have been in her 20s or yeah. 30s, you know. She would talk about people she went to high school with who, to our knowledge, she never saw again, maybe at a class reunion. She would even talk about meeting her brother at the bus stop, which would probably have put her at 10. Mm -hmm. So you can see you, you're going to deal with them in a much different way if you can figure out how old they are when they're saying these things. She would often threaten to run away, hitchhike, or catch the bus back to her hometown, which was probably the small hometown she grew up in in South Alabama but it became an obsession with her to go home. She had to get home. And one day someone casually mentioned that the bus no longer ran that route and she fell apart because it had become a coping mechanism for her to deal with the cage she felt she was in to get home. Changes in appearance and hygiene are another thing that you want to pay close attention to. Mama taught us, you don't go to the mailbox without your lipstick on. Absolutely not. In all of my memories of her, I don't remember ever seeing her not dressed with her hair done and with a cute outfit on. Makeup and earrings. Unless she was drinking her morning coffee or she had on her pajamas and was ready to go to bed. Mm -hmm. So it became concerning when we started noticing she just really wasn't wearing her makeup. Yeah. Sometimes a little bit, sometimes none at all. We gave her an out at first because, you know, there have been some articles written like when once you turn older, uh, you should wear less makeup because it, it makes you look older than you are. So we thought, well, yeah, she's just trying to, you know, keep in fashion yeah. with her age group. But in hindsight, we realized she, she was just forgetting. She was forgetting how to do it, and she was forgetting the steps in the process to do to get right. ready. But we even went so far as to lay her makeup out and label it in the order in which she needed to apply it. And the next time we came, it was all in a jumbled mess, and we never worried about it after yeah. that. And you know, it it quickly just kind of vanished, which is okay. Now you have to realize both of our parents are clean freaks. Mm -hmm. Daddy vacuumed every single day. Without fail. And sometimes twice a day, mm -hmm. if the mood <laughs> struck. Mama would dust every single day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with her house coat, she would just dust the table while she's on the phone, while she was, she was always cleaning. Their house was immaculate. At some point, we began to notice things weren't getting as clean as we were accustomed to them being. Now, it was never anything so obvious that you walked in and went, oh my word, what happened here? It was very gradual. But we knew we something knew. was amiss. Something was not quite right. We would notice pots and pans, dishes that had been cleaned but really weren't. Mm -mm. And I admit, I was guilty of trying to give them a pass. You know, sometimes I've done the same thing. Sometimes I pull out a, a pot and I go, well, Dad, come it, I know I cleaned that thing. What in the world was I thinking putting this up like this? But it just got worse. So that may be something that you might look for. Give a little surprise inspection. I would even say, make a special trip just for that purpose. Because mm -hmm. you may need to follow behind your parent to make sure things are getting clean the way they should be. Laundry is another issue. Mm. And depending on where your parent is, this is something you need to discuss with the facility what their procedures are. Mama always took care of their laundry. They would have clothes for years and years and they looked brand new. When she started having more severe symptoms of dementia and she was in different facilities, that became an issue. It was an issue because she and we did not really fully understand how the laundry thing works at each facility. This is something you will want to check into. Mm -hmm. um, at one facility, they cleaned everybody's clothes. She would have none of it because she didn't want her clothes washed with other people's. No, they did not do that, but she thought they did. 
Another place, if your clothes were in the laundry basket, the people at the facility would gather up the basket, wash your clothes, and bring them back to you in that basket. This made her a little happier. At the third place, if the clothes were in the laundry basket, that meant the family was going to take them home to soak or hand wash and then bring them back. And the clothes left on the floor would be washed. Right, because they did it confused. daily. Yeah. And yeah. so just make sure that you understand what's going on because laundry will become a hygienic issue. Speaking of hygiene, bathing is another thing that is a common problem with people with dementia. For some reason, they get very obstinate about not wanting to bathe. Now, both of our parents were very fastidious. They bathed every day without fail. And so sometimes, whether it was due to my father's back surgery issues or whether my mother had this fear of falling, they didn't want to bathe as much as they normally did. And that may be one of the reasons why the memory care facility doesn't even try to bathe as much as we would have thought that they would. I think they had her scheduled for three times a week to be bathed, and I don't think it was ever that much. And it may have been because Mama said, oh, I am clean. I don't need a bath. <laughs> so I can, I can yeah. see her saying that. Yeah. And so I can see them saying, okay, fine. We're, we're fine with that. But it's a concern because this is a time of incontinence where it's more important than ever to make sure that your parent is being cleaned well. And smelling fresh. <laughs> yes. Repeating things is another behavior that you, the caregiver, may find extremely challenging. <laughs> Try as you might mm -hmm. to redirect, to give them a heads up that, yeah, you've already told us this, or you've asked that question five times in the last 20 minutes. It's not gonna change anything. And so we learned the hard way you just go with it. Go with it. You listen to that story, even if you can repeat it verbatim. Because when we would tell our parent, yes, you've told us that already, it didn't make any difference. They would continue to tell it or continue to ask the same question. So we just learned just to smile and nod. Yep. Wandering is another typical behavior of people with dementia. Now, we didn't really experience that very much, we sort of headed it off and it mm -hmm. kind of took care of itself. I think if mama had had the ability to, she would have. We noticed early on with her driving, she would get lost. She would get lost in her little small hometown. How, again, I was giving her an out when she moved to where I was living because it was bigger, she was less familiar with it. It had changed a lot since the last time she had been there. So I was giving her an out. But when I got a phone call from a grocery store that neither one of us had ever been to before saying my mother was there and needed me to come get her, we knew it was time to Thankfully, do something. Thankfully, Jackie had written her name and number in my mother's wallet. When, in case of an emergency. In case of an emergency, contact with her number. Thankfully. But when we got her to the memory care, we didn't have to worry about her getting lost or wandering because they had her in a lockdown facility. Now that may seem like a cruel measure, but it is absolutely something that's necessary for the safety of the patient that they lock the resident in. They don't lock them in their room. No. They are able to roam around and mm -hmm. visit friends, go to the puzzle room, go outside, go do whatever. Mm -hmm. They just cannot exit an outside door. The building. They cannot lift a window. Mm -hmm. Because it is such a common behavior, you can imagine the nightmare that would cause. Also be aware that as you interview each facility, they're gonna wanna know if your parent is prone to wandering because some facilities are equipped to deal with that behavior and some don't want any part of it. So that may be exclude you right off the bat if that is an issue that you And that's okay, because that just means that's not the place for your mama. That's right. Because she was in a secure facility and could not get out, she would tell everyone that we had put her in prison. She was constantly banging on the door and begging people to come break her out of the prison. And for whatever reason, the mind is just a mysterious thing. She imagined that we had her locked in a phone booth. 
And we think that was probably because the entrance of the facility had glass and metal doors. And she had a relative who owned a phone company at one point. Right. So, so who knows? She, in, in her mind, somehow, that all got mixed up. But it was really heartbreaking when one day we found a note she had left on the, her bedside table, very illegible, but said something to the effect, help, they have me locked in a phone booth. Please let me out. The, you just, you have to brace yourself for those heartbreaking moments. There were other times where Mama would get in the hall and just have a seat. And it didn't matter what the people there did to try to convince her or coax her to get up and go back to your room. She was having none of it. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't real sweet about it either. <laughs> and so they would call me and I would immediately go over there. I'd just sit down on the floor right next to her. Get right down on her level. I'd just talk to her. And then after a little while, I'd say, it's going back to your room. And she'd get up and go. Mm -hmm. You could get her to do things that the staff couldn't get her to do. I'm not saying that they were not patient people. I'm just saying nobody's gonna do for your mama or your daddy the way that you will. That's right. And they, they're gonna to respond to you in a different way. Mm -hmm. Paranoia and suspicion. Our mother became convinced that people at the facility were stealing her remote or her phone, depending on what day of the week it was. And, and invariably, we would find it in her purse or we would find it in another room that she had probably wandered off and taken it with her. And now her purse, well, she sort of became Sophia. <laughs> she would take that purse with her everywhere she went, mm -hmm. and she would put everything that she thought somebody might want to steal in that purse. Money. Now, they tell you, do not keep any valuables. So we had already taken her jewelry. We had already, we only gave her like $2 and maybe $2. three quarters. Mm -hmm. So she had some change. She even put her toothbrush in there sometimes. She put her makeup in there one time because she was convinced that people were coming in and putting on her makeup. But see, those were things that were important to her. Mm -hmm. And so she would carry those things around with her for dear life. She even thought one time, or she accused you of stealing her jewelry. And it was, she had actually given it to you, wanted you to have it. And this was also uh, before even the facility told us to make sure we didn't have any valuables in her room. So don't be alarmed if your parent becomes paranoid or suspicious. It is just a part of the disease. It is not in their control. Foul language. Now there are many strange behaviors that happen with dementia, but this is one of the strangest. And until it happens to you, you just won't believe that it's possible. But it is. <laughs> it mainly happened during sundowning. Mm -hmm. And Daddy said, you know, y'all, she cusses like a sailor. She says words that I didn't even know she knew. Another challenging behavior that many people report observing in their parent is being sexually promiscuous or disrobing, taking off their clothes. And thankfully, we did not have <laughs> to experience that one. But that is a common one that you need to be aware of because many people do have to deal with that. And I have a friend who works with dementia patients and the caregivers, and she will tell you, even if they're not acting on what they're talking about, they are talking about sex right there in the church house. <laughs> UTIs can happen to anybody at any time. They are fairly common and somewhat frequent with people who have dementia. Because they forget they haven't had enough to drink or eat that day. Right. And in all fairness, most of us don't drink enough. Oh, I don't. And so there again, you want to give your parents an out. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, our hearts, um, I think it was Frederick Bigner said, a bleeding heart can bleed to death. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yes, give your parents grace, but not if it's going to be to their detriment. Uh, new TIs can certainly get that way quickly. They will become very confused. They'll even hallucinate. And um, when you suspect that it is a UTI that's at play, 
you need to immediately let the nursing staff at the facility know. Just be forewarned. They have to get a sample, they send it off, and it can take seven to 10 days to Who get knew? the results back. Who knew it would take that long? Yeah. I thought it was like a two or three day process. Yeah. Now I do know throughout our experience, they do have to send it off and it has to grow in a, a dish somewhere. Or something. And, yeah. But if you are a medical professional and you know the answer to this, please respond and let us know why does it take so long when you've got an elderly patient who is physically compromised and has dementia before you can even get an answer and start a solution. One time, it took over two weeks for us to get the Unbelievably. answer back. Unbelievably, and you feel so out of control because you're supposed to be the advocate for your parent. You're supposed to be watching out for their best interest and you feel helpless because there's nothing you can do to speed up that process. It just takes forever. Yeah. And in the meantime, your parents' health may just be deteriorating even further, especially if they start hallucinating. One wonderful sitter that my father had. We loved her. She even put my father on a timer. And so every 20 minutes, that timer would go off and she would get after him to take a few more sips of water. Now, she had the glass and she had it marked. Yeah. He had to drink down to the yeah. next mark. And that's the kind of sitter you, you hope that you get for your parent because that will keep them on track with their water and their food intake. UTI symptoms may include difficulty urinating, a strong urine odor or a fever, but sometimes they don't present any symptoms. So it becomes increasingly important for the caregiver to be on the lookout for any changes in behavior. Depression. Just like our mother never went to the mailbox without her lipstick, she also never napped. It was just not in her to take a nap. She was very active. She was an avid, vast reader. She would work jigsaw puzzles, work on genealogy, knit, sew, hand sew. She did so many things. Watched baseball games, the Atlanta Braves, and says, I mean, you know, just football, just had so many interests and was so involved in the in choir and church and yeah. she was a doer, she was a doer. So imagine our surprise when we walked in and she's on the floor in front of the fireplace. She didn't fall, she liked to get on the floor, but mm -hmm. she curled up on the floor with the pillow and a blanket in front of the fireplace, taking a nap and again. She just withdrew from well, everything. And well, at first, I was giving her yet another pass mm -hmm. because I knew between my mother and my father, sleepless nights could happen or at least not good sleep. It may have been fitful sleep or they woke up so early, then they're tired. So I was thinking, well, she needs this rest, but yeah. it became a pattern. And it wasn't long before she was sleeping more than she was awake. Now she had already been given some little helpers Mm -hmm. when she was sundowning and they just were no longer really doing the trick. In fact, I don't know that anything does the trick during an episode of sundowners. It, it plays itself out. Mm -hmm. I, I, but again, I'm not a medical professional. But we did finally realize, looking in the rear view mirror, she was depressed. Mm -hmm. If you notice any change in behavior or their health. Any observation that you've made that concerns you or you're trying to justify, talk to their nurse, talk to their doctor. Let them be aware of it. If nothing else, it's documented that this was an issue on this date so that they can compare to see, is this getting worse or is it getting better? Bottom line is, you are their advocate. And if you have any questions for us, be sure and leave them in the comments. Or if you just want to note some of the observations that you've had with your parent, that may help someone else going through the same thing. And if you're getting value, please hit that like and subscribe to our channel. Subscribe.